Hello. Good evening, Shagun. Hello, ma'am. Good evening. So, in the last session, we have discussed about uh, you know uh, social engineering tools, and today yes, we will see about sniffing yes, and see some practical about sniffing. Okay. Okay, ma'am. So sniffing or basically packet sniffer uh, is a utility that has been used since the original days of Ethernet, okay? Like to monetize the uh, network packets in any organization to basically to suspect, uh, you know, to uh, suspect any, you know, malicious uh, packet. Packet sniffing allows individuals to capture data as it is transmitted over a network. The technique is used by network professional to diagnose network issues by malicious users to capture encrypted data. So that is the, you know, you can see a simulation like uh, it's a client machine. So it's a valid uh, packet that is uh, generating from the server. And uh, in that, this is the capture device, you can say, or the attacker's device. So basically it will, uh, you know, um, update, the, uh, update the router configuration uh, and force the router to uh, broadcast the packet so that all the machines that are currently present in the network get uh, uh, the packets, okay, the, get the packet information. And uh, they also spoof their IP address and their MAC address so they don't get detected, okay. So that is the way that how sniffing works. So like there are a lot of techniques we will discuss it today. So packet sniffing is the process of monitoring and capturing all data packets passing through a given network uh, using a software application or hardware device. It allows the attacker to observe and access the entire traffic from a given input. And uh, it will also allow to you know, gather information such as telnet, password, email traffic, system log, uh, or router configurations, web traffic, DNS traffic, FTP password, chat sessions, and account information. Also, you can uh, you know, sometimes um, some applications, web application use the sessions like in the transaction of banking thing. So they can also uh, use those sessions also. So now that how the sniffing works. So like the most common way of networking computer is through an Ethernet connection, okay? And a computer connected to a LAN and uh, of course uh, any computer has like two identification details, MAC address and IP address, okay? So like a MAC address is unique to all and IP address is something like uh, look, uh, allocated by the DHCP, uh, you know, your router. So the data link layer of the OSI model, uh, which we generally used, uh, you know, in the networking. So uh, it work, uh, the Ethernet work on the OSI layer. So like the MAC address also, uh, which we access the MAC address details that is on the also on the data link layer and the destinations MAC address also. So, uh, and it also uses the, you know, um, ARP protocol, uh, or you can say ARP catch, not protocol, ARP catch. So like uh, if there is no entry for the IP address and ARP broadcast of a request, packet goes to all machines on the local uh, subnetwork. So uh, you can say it's something like that. Suppose uh, there is 10 computers in a particular topology, okay? And uh, uh, there are 10 computers. And so uh, let me just, bring my pen so it can be easy to explain. Okay, ma'am. we have two scenarios basically uh, whenever a computer connected to a network one scenario is that uh, when a computer and one scenario is using the same packet ma'am uh, i'm not able to hear you 
Can you hear me now? No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So there are two scenarios uh, in which we connect our, you know, devices like uh, using the hub or using the switch. Okay. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, there is a topology. Uh, this is device one. This is device two, and this is device three. And here is our internet and the data backup coming. This is our internet and device one. So basically in the hub thing, what happened is that whenever data packets come, so it contains the MAC address, okay, and the IP address. So data packet comes to the hub and what hub will do, it will broadcast all the packets, okay. And like the same packet will broadcast to the all the devices. Now, which devices information will get matched to that IP address, which is mentioned in the packet, okay. Like uh, the suppose the destined, IP address is that MAC address and the IP address is getting same to that packet, okay? So like it will accept that packet and these devices uh, uh, post, uh, you know, information is different, not that particular IP address or MAC address, so they will reject it. So that is the one way of working the packet. In switch, what happened is that whenever a data packet comes, okay? So like switch uh, already, or you can say a router already uses the, you know, ARP uh, table we have. I think you have heard about it, the ARP yes, table. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. So like uh, it stores all the, you know, router and uh, we can say um, router details or IP addresses so that uh, they, they can forward, uh, you know, for the traffic management also, or they can forward the particular packet to that destination, okay, for the route management also. So uh, it will just uh, uh, see, look out in, in, in its table, like what uh, IP address and MAC address is there. And according to that table, it will redirect that packet to the particular device, okay. So that is the one way. Now what happens is that what attacker will do, this is our attacker. So the most scenario, easiest scenario is that the hub. So they are one way. Either we convert that switch into hub, okay? That is the one way. Or either we, you know, uh, force the uh, ARP table to get, uh, you know, uh, over, uh, you can say over buffer. The buffer memory get full and uh, the table, like we force the router to get, uh, update their uh, existing IP addresses. So that is the one way. So what attacker will do usually uh, by, uh, it, it uses in one method which, which we call uh, Proskosius method, let me see. Uh, yeah, Promicusis method. Oh, my diagram went down. I need to draw it again. <laughs> So in the Promicus method, we say is that modify the information in the NIC, the data link layer of the OSI, okay? And what it will do, just when it uh, switch to the Promicus mode, uh, the switch will uh, again uh, behave as a hub, okay? It will start working as a hub. Now, instead of looking into the ARP uh, protocol table, it will generally broadcast all the data packets, okay? like the hub. So that is the one way and uh, the in the hub situation already the uh, attacker's motivation is easy, okay? Basically it will send the packet and uh, it will get uh, broadcasted to all the devices and uh, he will just, uh, you know, using the tool, uh, whatever the tool he is using to generate his, uh, you know, packets, he will uh, generate the packets in such a way so that each devices will accept that packet, okay? That is the technique of generating the packets. And basically uh, after gen uh, getting the packets, he will have the, all the traffic information. Now in this case, particularly majorly, we use the switch because we think the switches are more secure. So what attacker will do, attacker just basically over flood the switch with the Mac, uh, you know, Mac flooding. Okay, so it will just over, um, you can say, or using the uh, ARP protocols or basically the MAC flooding. So what happened is that it will generate the MAC packets in a, such a quantity so that uh, the router will not handle, uh, like over exceeds its memory. And after, after that, it will just, uh, we will force the router to just update its table. So when it will update its table, 
so our ip address also will gonna save there okay that is the one way another thing another thing sometimes uh, uh, it will not get update according to the you know attackers packet configuring uh, it will just start behaving like a hub so that is the two scenarios we have so when I, when it start will uh, behaving like a hub all the you know dev devices will accept that packet and respond back and uh, your network uh, monitoring will be there and when uh, and in in that case uh, when the ip uh, you know get saved into the router table so like um, again whatever the communication will be there you know it will pass through it okay so that yeah. is the way of the technique uh, that how usually the you know we use so like basically a sniffer turns the nic of a system to prometheus mode so that is the mode either we uh, you know flood with it mac packets or arp protocols we have for the arp packets we also have or um, we uh, also use you know um, basically switch the ethernet also there is another technique also but that is a uh, very uh, you know rarely we used the the most used method is the mac flooding so okay, like uh, switches basically maintain the transmission table for the various mac addresses to the physical ports on the switch so uh, like mac flooding make use of the limitation of bombard the switches with the fake mac addresses okay okay now when the fake mac addresses uh, the switch can no longer keep up once this happened to a switch it will enter a fall open mode when it's starting act as a hub by broadcasting the packet to all the ports and the switches that are currently present on the system and once that happen it become very easy to perform sniffing uh, you can use the wireshark and any other protocol so that okay, is the way how the sn uh, sniffing works okay so like there are two type of sniffing we have passive sniffing and active sniffing so passive sniffing refers to the sniffing through the web hub okay where okay, the traffic is sent to all the ports and then we have is that uh, uh, it active. active sniffing so active sniffing is used to sniff a switch based network wherever okay, the switch switches are used then we have it involves uh, monitoring packets sent by other without sending any additional data packets in the network traffic okay we don't usually send any other uh, you know network traffic we just basically send you can use a you know uh, use a particular device and you will have capture all the data and in this case we generate the arp packet or, or you can say a, a mac uh, packet so that we can flood the uh, table okay or you can say the content addressable memory that is the table which keeps all the information okay, you know to over flood it now yes, how uses outdated approach as i said earlier and yes, most modern it was now uses the switches so that is okay. the most widely use technique flooding the um, switch and to force it update now how the attacker sniffs so that is the step one an attacker uh, decides to hack a network first discover the appropriate to you know access the network okay once he is in the network it will connect the system or a lap or his laptop whatever you say to one it's of the ports of the switches so when he will um, you know connect with one of the ports so he will just uh, connect it to the network and then he will determine the network information such as what is the topology of the networks used by the discovery so that is the second part then in third part we usually analyzing like what network topology is there attacker identifies the victim machine to the target okay like which is the weakest link we have or you can say then we have the step four is that uh, um, an attacker who identifies a target machine uh, so basically they using the arp spoofing technique or you know so uh, you can say a max spoofing technique to overflood the um, you know uh, tables okay so that is the type of man in the middle attack then we have uh, the fifth one is that the, the uh, you know basically it this step will help to divert all the traffic to his system and uh, like this is a typical uh, man in middle attack uh, so like usually after uh, sending the packets uh, he is directing order traffic towards him and the, the sixth step is the final now attacker can see all the data packets sent and received by the victim and attacker can now also you know uh, extract sensitive information from the packet such as passwords username credit card details and pens also or he can use you know decrypted tools to you know decrypt the encrypted packets also
then we have what are the protocols that are prone to uh, vulnerability for the sniffing okay that are prone to sniffing so telnet of course you know we use it for the remote execution and our login also so like, these are the protocols that we used for the remote executions so but if you want to gain the access you need to have the username and passwords okay so like telnet uh, uh, we can say is that um, our login also enables an attacker to log into a network machine reportedly via TCP connection. And uh, neither of these protocols provide encryption and therefore data traveling between clients connected to any of these protocol um, in plain text, okay? Now you have an idea like uh, how easy it is to uh, see like the username and password because the data packets which are generating uh, coming from the telnet or you know uh, using the telnet port or our login, they will come in a plain text, not the encrypted form. And the attacker can sniff the keystrokes, including the username and password, anything, okay? Like, because we are using the remote execution, okay? So then we have is HTTP. So like, uh, due to vulnerabilities in the default version of HTTP websites implementing HTTP transfer, user data across the network is in plain text again, not as encrypted. That is why we use the HTTP PS so that data packets are encrypted, which attackers can read to steal the credentials, okay? Then we have is that uh, POP. So POP is a post office protocol, which uh, uh, basically uh, what would, uh, I think it allows the user's workstation to access the mail from a mailbox server. Yeah, that is the one. Uh, it allows the user to access the mail from a mailbox server and um, any user can send a mail from workstation to the mailbox via SMTP, okay? So like uh, attacker can easily sniff the data flowing across a POP network in clear text because of the protocol weak security implementation. Then we have is that IMAP. So internet message protocol uh, that is widely we used allows a client to access and manipulate all the electronic mail messages on the server. And the protocol offers inadequate security, which allows the user to obtain the data. Again, all these ports, like whatever the data packet they send, they don't encrypt the data packet. And that is why the data is in the plain text, okay? And it is easily, you know, you need don't need to decrypt it. So you can easily see it, uh, like in the plain text, okay? And that is following the FTP also, like in the file sharing protocol also. Okay, and then in the SMTP and NNTP also. So like NNTP is for the network news transfer protocol and SMTP is for the simple mail transfer protocol. So that is all the vulnerabilities are because of the plain text, okay, not okay, of the encryption. That okay, is the one. Now we have like some certain type of hardware we also use like the catch the signals, okay. Like so, some way, uh, I think uh, uh, maybe some uh, where you have seen, like we have the, you know, uh, doors that open uh, only when you scan the, you know, your biometric or maybe your, uh, you scan your card, identity card. Okay, so like when you are uh, scanning your identity card to that scanner, okay, which, which is assigned to open the door, whether if you are, uh, you know, authorized to access that, uh, uh, you know, door or not. So if during that time when you are scanning it, if a hardware matlab, analyzer is there, so it will scan that signal also, okay? So like when it will scan that signal, it will decrypt it and your, uh, you know, anyone can clone your signal after that and he can use your identity. So if the second person is, uh, you know, entering to the door, and you, uh, but the law in the logs of the system, your identity will be created. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So that is the method. Yes, ma'am. So a hardware protocol analyzer is a piece of equipment and is a piece of uh, that captures signal without altering the traffic in a cable segment. Like you are not, uh, uh, you can say it's a passive method. Okay. Catching the information. And it can be used to monitor network users and identify malicious network traffic generated by hacking software installed in the network, or you can say it captures a data packet, decodes it and analyzes it content based on a certain predetermined rules. And it allows the attacker to see individual data bytes of each packet passing through the cable. So like these are the things uh, like um, in the scanners we see in the scanner time also, 
uh, you know, when when you scan the, you know, uh, UPI and thing, uh, I think uh, there also it will work, you know, the hardware protocol analyzers. So then we have the wiretapping. Wiretapping is the process of monitoring of telephone and internet conversation by a third party. An attacker connect a listening device to the circuit carrying information between two phones or the host on the internet. It allows an attacker to monitor intercept access and record information contained in a data flow in a communication system. So like in the most of the countries where tappings and uh, like uh, in the US especially, uh, government uses the wiretapping so that uh, they can monitor the suspected person of the, um, like uh, uh, if he uh, before the you know final decision that he is a criminal or not like uh, the prosecution uh, will gain uh, can have a permission from the government to uh, wiretap his home okay like to monitor his all the calls and activities okay even the cameras they can also install the cameras also and then we have two type of wiretapping are there so active wire Tapping and passive wiretapping. So in active wiretapping, it monitors, records, and alters, and also injects data into the communication of the traffic. Okay. And the passive one, it will just normally monitor and record the data traffic, collect the knowledge regarding the data it contains. So in the legalized version, uh, when we say that um, government authorized us, we use this one, the passive wiretapping. Okay. So now we will move to the parrot machine and. Uh, we will see one way to like, uh, uh, I will uh, show you the mag flooding technique, okay? Because that is the widely used one. To generate the packets and I also use the Windows server, okay? And do you know which uh, software we use for the network capturing, or oh, sorry, packet capture? Uh, Nmap. We can use, uh, I don't think so, Nmap. We use the Wireshark, that is the most popular one. Okay. Wireshark to traffic the uh, networks and uh, you know monitor like Wireshark is a very powerful tool and still commercially it is used widely and like uh, no other packets uh, hasn't give uh, accuracy yet uh, like the Wireshark okay? like it has the highest accuracy also so that is the and Wireshark also comes pre-installed with the Linux machines I don't know know about Kali but Parrot it comes in pre-installed. But in the Windows, we need to install it from its website. Hello. Hello. Uh, sorry, ma'am. I was not able to hear you for two minutes. I was. I was quite. Uh, actually, I was waiting to you know load my machine. Was... Okay, ma'am. I just muted myself and I went to check my Wi-Fi. I thought it okay. <laughs> no, no, it's not like that. So from tomorrow, you have the internship sessions, no? Ma'am, uh, from 2nd of March. Okay, from 2nd of March. Ma'am, one thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, mm -hmm. Ma'am, what, ma what should I add in my introduction? You can add like uh, 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 you are currently. What is the role you are pen tester now? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, should I tell them that, that I am also studying? Maybe. Yeah, you can uh, pursuing uh, whatever the B Tech or something. You can yes, tell them. Okay. And uh, currently, you are a pen tester in the fire shop. Okay. Okay, ma'am. That is the one. Why is it too slow?
And today, one more thing we will see today, just a practical, and uh, uh, it's theory, we will cover it later. So like uh, uh, after this practical, we will see like a practical, which also contain the web server hacking and also the system hacking. You can say that mix of both using the Metasploit. So I will discuss the theory later uh, and uh, um, because I want to cover that practical first, okay? So we will use the web server method at a time to, you know, uh, why is it taking so long? So I have already installed the Wireshark in my uh, server machine, okay? So that uh, I can, you know, monitor the packets. Okay, ma'am. So you can download it from the Wireshark's official, uh, oh, sorry, official website, okay, according to your variant, uh, maybe with the Linux or, uh, so like uh, in the Parrot, it, it comes pre-installed. Okay, ma'am. So ma'am, are we using, uh, like, are we seeing the practical from Parrot or Windows? So uh, in this case, currently, uh, the Windows machine will be my, uh, uh, basically, uh, that yeah. practical that I'm going to show you is basically, uh, let one thing, let me, okay, it started. Let me just tell you what I'm going to do. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I wanted to ask you one more thing, ma'am. Uh, how should I request for pen and pad? You need to write the letter to the HR, okay? Requ uh, sorry, letter the mail to the HR and CC with Amar Preet, okay? Or I'm you can also it. directly uh, yes, ma'am. For the requirement of the pen and tablet, okay? For the internship sessions demonstration, so you can write out that and send it. But it will take some time to process. Okay, ma'am. After the request get accepted and then uh, it will just uh, post to your home or by the post. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma so this is the Wireshark tool uh, we have uh, like started in our Windows over machine. Have you used it before? Yes, ma'am. My machine is getting too slow. Um, uh, it is because of screen sharing maybe. Oh, so, uh, I actually, uh, it's like, it's at 8 GB RAM. Oh. And uh, I just uh, do a lot of things with machine, okay, almost every day. <laughs> so yes. like the memory, memory get fragmented. So I need I to like, uh, every two days, I need to defragment it. And oh. from the past two days, I haven't defragmented it. That is why it is too slow. Okay, ma'am. That is the reason. Mom, should I inform uh, Amar Preet Mom prior that I have like I am writing a mail to HR for this? Directly uh, write the mail to the Amar Preet and uh, also to the HR. Okay, uh, regarding the request of pen and tablet, it's not okay. uh, to give the prior notice. Okay, Mom. Ma'am, one thing I wanted to ask you, ma'am, I have never installed my uh, virtual machine since four years. <laughs> so, ma'am, if I, Problem. like, uh, from the first year of my B.Tech engineering, I have installed it that, uh, like, since then, and I have never installed it. So, ma'am, if I install it, and I need to perform practicals, like, showing them, uh, like, setup of a virtual machine, VMware, if I will do that, so uh, will I be able to retrieve my machines? Uh, you can, what can you do is just, I think uh, in the virtual box, you have an option of taking the snapshot, this one. In the virtual box, it is, it is available. You need to find it so that uh, when you will take the snapshot, okay? So jo abhi currently, tumhare virtual machine ka jo bhi state hoga na, tumne jo bhi data package, kuch bhi install kiya hoga, kuch rakha hoga. So, yes, उस मशीन की जैसे ओवर टाइप की वो होती है इमेज वो बन जाएगी 
अच्छा। तो तुम जब फ्रेश इंस्टॉलेशन करोगे तो वो तो तुम उन्हें दिखा दोगे लेकिन बाद में यूज करने के लिए तुम अपनी जो जो स्नैपशॉट वाली मशीन होगी जहाँ भी तुम उसको रिस्टिनेशन होता है सेव करने का उसी फोल्डर में सेव होगा जहाँ तुम्हारी मशीन की लोकेशन है तो तुम वो स्नैपशॉट को इम्पोर्ट कर लेना तो स्नैपशॉट से क्या होता है ना तुम्हारा डेटा लाइक उसी स्टेज में सेव होती है मशीन तुम्हारी कुछ उसमें डिफरेंस नहीं होता मतलब मैम मैंने ना इमेज ही डाउनलोड किया है तो इमेज ना अपने आप मतलब ऐसे मैंने ना एक बार हुआ था कि मेरा लैपटॉप खराब हुआ था बीच में बहुत बहुत टाइम हो गया तो मैं तो भूल भी गई लेकिन उसके बाद मेरी जो उस टाइम करंट जो मैंने विंडो और शायद एक्सपी और मेरी काली तो पहले से ही है तो वो अपनी इमेज डाल रही थी ना तो वो अपने आप रिट्रीव हो गई तो मुझे कुछ भी तो उसमें हो सकता है कि उसमें पहले से स्नैपशॉट पड़े होंगे ना इसीलिए तो स्नैपशॉट ऐसे वर्क करते हैं तो तुम ले सकते हो तुम्हारे मशीन मतलब यू नो सही रहेंगे तो देखो यहाँ पे ना पैरेट में जैसे पी इंस्टॉल्ड आता है सो तुम इसको ना मोस्ट यू टूल्स में भी तुम्हें मिल जाएगा ये जगह डाल दिया इसमें सी सी एन ए की उसके लिए भी डाल दिया हाँ तो उस नेटवर्किंग भी तो आनी चाहिए तुम्हें हैकिंग के लिए नेटवर्किंग भी चाहिए देखो ये वायरशाह का इंटरफेस है ठीक है तो देखो यहाँ पे अगर तुम्हारे कई सारे कनेक्शन होते हैं इथरनेट वन पे भी मोड होता सब कुछ तो यहाँ पे दिखा रहा था जैसे मैं इथरनेट इस पर क्लिक करूंगी डबल क्लिक करूंगी तो यहाँ पे ना मेरे वो डेटा पैकेट्स दिखाने लगे अब देखो ये स्टॉप बटन है ये रन का बटन है और ये रीस्टार्ट का बटन है तो यहाँ पे मेरे नेटवर्क मॉनिटरिंग शुरू हो जाएगी सो अभी ये स्लो काम कर रहा है अब ये होगा ओके एंड दिस इज द वन इन द पैरट ठीक है ओके पैरट में ना जैसे अभी बहुत सारी चीजें यूज हो रही है तो इसलिए सबके लिए दिखा रहा है कि बेसिकली क्या ट्रैफिक है बट अभी हमें इथरनेट का अपना देखना है ठीक है तो हम अगर अभी डबल क्लिक करते हैं इस पर तो लाइव कैप्चर इन प्रोग्रेस से देखो हम्म तो देखो यहाँ पे हमें दिख रहा है ना कि तो इस समय क्या हो रहा है ना कि ये सारा डेटा कैप्चर कर रहा है जो कि मेरे करंट नेटवर्क में है ठीक है ओके मैम। सो मैं इसमें क्या कर रही हूँ so what I am doing is currently that this is my uh, home network oh, it's very colorful mm-hmm. so that is my home network or you can say my router okay basically it's a hub okay but we use in the common language router and uh, since I have uh, configured my machine on the bridge That is why my Parrot machine also have a its own unique IP address, yes, and my Windows machine also like the host machine has also the yes. Windows IP address. Then I have the Windows server, so yes, Windows ma'am. server has also its own IP address. Okay, because okay. I have in the bridge connection. So now what happen is that when I open the Wireshark in that, it usually starts capturing all the network traffic which are coming from this uh, like. and uh, because we are using the you know windows server in our multiple machine that is why it is showing the you know, vmware from vmware ports then to the machine okay so like what i will do in this uh, practical is that there is no need of host machine so like i will just generate the arp uh, pa- sorry mac packets okay i will do the mac flooding so i will do the mac flooding and i will generate those packets from a parrot machine and send it to this one because i have said said uh, you know uh, uh, identify it as my target machine okay like i want to just basically monitor this machine so what i will do i will generate like suppose i will generate 10 packets of arp uh, mac flood so this will go to this one okay now then we will monitor in the you know wireshark that all the packets uh, that are fake uh, requested okay like uh, the fake uh, ip addresses and the fake mac address you will get the same result uh, in the parrot wash because i am generating from it and in the windows server you will see that all the same packets are also be there so like i am basically flooding the windows server's ip address uh, to capture its uh, network so that is the one so i am doing this thing so like uh, okay. currently avas kat rahi hai अभी जो मैंने समझाया वो आया आवाज कट रही है मैम आपकी 
हेलो हेलो अभी जो मैंने समझाया वो आ गया नहीं मैं आपकी आवाज कट रही है बहुत हाँ क्योंकि मैंने इसमें भी स्टार्ट कर दिया ना कैप्चरिंग फिर से समझा देती हूँ तो देखो मैं क्या करूंगी पैरेट से ना मैं मैक पैकेज जनरेट करूंगी ठीक है क्योंकि मुझे मैक फ्लडिंग करनी है ओके यस मैम और फिर जब मैं मैक पैकेज जनरेट करूंगी बट मैं सबको नहीं भेजूंगी ना अगर मुझे सबको भेजना होता तो मैं राउटर के आईपी देती तो वो सबके पास जाता बिकॉज मेरे घर का राउटर फिर दिक्कत हो जाएगा <laughs> तो मैंने जो टारगेट चूज किया वो विन सर्वर मेरा मतलब जो विंडो ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन मशीन है उसको मैंने चूज किया है तो मैं उसका आईपी एड्रेस लिखूंगी साथ में तो मैं यहाँ से फ्लडिंग पैकेज जनरेट करूंगी और इसको फ्लड करूंगी तो फिर हम लोग मॉनिटर करेंगे मतलब ये देखेंगे कि ठीक है जो जो पैकेट मैंने यहाँ से जनरेट किए थे उनके पास फेक मैक और आईपी एड्रेसेस होंगे ठीक है जो कि फेक होंगे और वो यहाँ के भी नेटवर्क में सारे कैप्चर होंगे तो हम लोग ये एनालाइज करेंगे मतलब अगर प्रूफ देखेंगे फ्लडिंग का ठीक है ओके okay, अगर बहुत ज्यादा क्वान्टिटी में मैं ऐसे जनरेट करूंगी तो फिर सर्वर मशीन यू नो वो बाईपास हो जाएगा सॉरी राउटर का दिक्कत हो जाएगा सो मैं अभी वो प्रैक्टिकल में करके नहीं दिखा सकती हूँ सो दैट इज लाइक यू नो करेंटली जो जो हमारी तो ये हमारी विंडो सर्वर मशीन है और अभी देखो कौन कौन से हमारा यूज हो रहा है तो ये सारा ना नेटवर्क जो है ये ये देखो ये सारा ना ए के पैकेट यूज हो रहे हैं हमारे सारे ठीक है टीसीबी पैकेट यूज हो रहे हैं एस तो ये हमारा सारा नेटवर्क जो है वो ट्रैफिक कैप्चर कर रहा है ठीक है और अगर तुम किसी जर्नल पैकेट पे सर्च करो मतलब क्लिक करोगे तो तुम्हें उसकी इन्फॉर्मेशन मिलेगी ठीक है कि ये हाइपर टेक्स प्रोटोकॉल है और ये वी एम वेयर सोर्स मशीन है यहाँ डेस्टिनेशन मशीन है तो तुम्हें सोर्स और डेस्टिनेशन भी दिखा रहा है ठीक है फिर अभी देखो यहाँ पे तो हमने कर लिया अब ये हमारा पैरेट मशीन है ठीक है पैरेट मशीन जो है वो हमारा अभी करेंटली में थर्नर टू यूज कर रहा है ठीक है सो अगर मैं इस पैकेट पर क्लिक करती हूँ तो देखो फ्रेम नाइन चेंज हो गया इसकी वो दे रहा है सो so, अब मैं क्या करूंगी अपना टर्मिनल ओपन करूंगी क्योंकि मुझे मैक फ्लडिंग करनी है नहीं यू रूट यूजर एक्सेस सो व्हाट आई विल डू आई जस्ट जनरेट द मैक ऑफ सो इट्स फॉर जनरेटिंग कमांड टू जनरेट द मैक पैकेट्स एंड देन विद द आई आई विल डिफाइन द इंटरफेस ओके लाइक वॉट इंटरफेस आई एम करेंटली यूजिंग फ्रॉम विच इंटरफेस आई वॉन्ट टू जनरेट द पैकेट्स ओके सो लाइक इन माई केस इट इट इज इथरनेट जीरो ओके वी हैव सीन इट ओके सो आई विल यूज द इथरनेट जीरो यू कैन स्पेसिफाई आफ्टर द हाई फिन आई एंड आफ्टर दैट वी यूज एन सो लाइक वॉट नंबर ऑफ पैकेट्स आई वॉन्ट टू सेंड सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू सेंड टेन पैकेट्स Now these are the packages that has been generated and sent towards. Now let's just see in the Wireshark. Is there IPPV four packets are there or not? So you can see that these are the packages that we have recently, you know, created, and they all have the fake IP address and the MAC address, the okay, source and destination. If I will click on any of them, you can see the source and destination, and. Uh, you know intercut protocol and something like that now remember this result this protocol result uh, we will see that in the windows server machine also so like is it has captured okay let me reload it so let me just generate it once again um now to see it should be there why isn't it capturing it we are using the ethernet zero and i 
it should have captured the data packets. I don't know why it is capturing. अभी शाम को मैंने किया था तो capture कर रहा था. क्योंकि ये तो बहुत accurate है. हाँ, slow होगा. हो सकता है. Bandwidth consume हो रही है काफी. तो मतलब ये जो same result है ना ये यहाँ भी आएगा. ठीक है कोई डिफरेंस नहीं आएगा वो जो सेम पैकेट है जो हमारी लिस्ट है वो ये ये जो मतलब आईपीबी फोर वाले पैकेट जो हमने जनरेट किए जी एज इट इज सारे जो है वो यहाँ भी कैप्चर होंगे अभी ये टाइम ले रहा धीरे धीरे कैप्चर कर रहा अभी तो अपने ही नहीं कैप्चर कर पाए ये तो ट्राई कर लूंगी ठीक है तुम अपने एंड पे ट्राई कर लेना मुझे ये एक मेथड है ठीक है ये मैक फ्लडिंग का एक मेथड है तो ये बेसिकली हम लोग करते हैं जेनरेट करने के लिए ये ही स्निफिंग मेथड है वायर शार्क ही हम लोग यूज करते हैं किसी भी नेटवर्क को स्निफ करने के लिए या फिर जब हम लोग ऑडिटिंग करते हैं यू नो पेंटेस्टिंग करेंगे यस मैम तो वहां पे भी हम लोग वायर शार्क ही है जो रन करते हैं सो दैट इट विल जस्ट बेसिकली टू नेटवर्क द ट्रैफिक ओके तो यूजली आई टी डिपार्टमेंट्स भी जो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के होते हैं उन सब में भी रन कर रहे होते हैं so now I need to show you the next practical okay so that is like uh, I need to open my uh, metal spoilable machine because uh, I will you know let my metal spoilable machine behave as a uh, web server okay because it okay, it's containing it is prone to uh, configure in a web server behavior so So you can also uh, like whatever we will see. You can uh, further use. I will show you one method using the you know web server pen testing. Okay, but uh, you can also use that same method uh, for you know system hacking also or you know bypassing uh, the use uh, securities to generate a username and uh, passwords also. Okay, so it's all about the vulnerabilities. Okay. So, like uh, in particular, this one uh, I will show you web uh, web server because we need to cover that topic. And in the next session, I will give you the demonstration of the theory of the web server. And uh, after that, in the system hacking one, uh, we will use another port to just hack the system. You know, bypassing the system using the brute force further. So that okay, is method. But for but for demonstration, because I'm using the CH version, I have to use the Metaspoil one machine. So this is my machine, and let's just know the IP address. So this is the IP address one seventy two twenty eight point twenty two point four. Okay. Now in the parrot, what I need to do is just uh, first of all I need to like uh, basically I will uh, suppose this is a web server. Okay. So I need to first open the Firefox. And enter this IP address to see if the host is live or not. So what I will do, I will just simply type the IP address one seventy two, and then what is that twenty eight, twenty two, fourteen, and I will open my Metaspoilable one. Now you can see that okay, it's a web server okay. Okay ma'am. So you can see that it is using the Tukey Wiki service PHP my admin. So we can use this one for the SQL injection okay. Okay, and this multi day also you can use this one also for the you know SQL map to generate the tables and all. A uh, multi day you also and we have web day. Okay, so like this is our host machine is available because intentionally the metasquabel has been created to like to be vulnerable. Yes. Now what I will do, I will just gather some information about it because our first uh, method is to just gather the information. Like the IP, uh, we know the IP address, but like, what are the ports are open? So basically, I will run the intent scan, and for the intent scan, we have the T four, and then aggressive, then version, because I want to know the vulnerabilities. Then the twenty eight, 
22 and 14. So I am running the intense scan uh, with the nmap to see like what are the open ports so that I can further exploit it. Now we can see that a lot of ports are open is here, okay? Like TCP one is open here, and then we have the FTP protocol is also open here. You will see like, it will take some time, the intense scan. Port 22 is also here, the SSH port is also here. No FTP port, bounce port response it. So FTP port is open. And we will use this port to access the files of the web server, okay? Yeah. Whatever the files are connected. Because in the web server, what we do, we just use them for the web applications to like basically client and uh, server communication and what how the communication will happen by exchanging, you know, files and scripts are there index.html. And then we have uh, uh, different directories are there. So basically we will use the FTP protocol, file transferring protocol, because web servers use the file transfer protocol to uh, transfer its scripts and uh, files over the servers and application, okay? Yeah. So as you can see here, uh, we have run the intense scan and, and it has been completed. So like we have the FTP server status connected to this one. Okay, logged in as FTP. We have the open FTP server at the port 22. And also the SSH is open. So like from SSH, I can, uh, you know, I can have the uh, shell uh, access, okay? The PowerShell access of the user machine. Okay, uh, let me just show you the SSH one. Yeah. we can that we can access. Uh, so what I will do is this MSF console. So the most widely used and popular tool for the pen testing meta exploit. So it will take some time to, and it will come pre-installed with the Linux machines. I think in the Kali machine also. Okay, ma'am. We have the open SSH and it is using this one. And where are our FTP server ports? SQL information, like we have seen, like it is using uh, MySQL also, you can see uh, the vulnerabilities associated to it. So, So port 21 is our FTP. So meanwhile, it is, uh, okay, it has been opened now. Now I'm uh, showing you like uh, for the SSH one, like if I want to access the PowerShell, okay. And it will, uh, you can access the PowerShell, uh, sorry, PowerShell after you gain the username and uh, password. Now in this case, I already know the username password. So like I will use it. But for uh -huh. that, uh, that comes in the system hacking and we can use the brute force attack to, uh, you know, generate the passwords and uh, username. So uh -huh. what can I type? So like SSH and then I will type uh, for that one. I don't need that. I can simply use the terminal. So to SU, so I will type SSH for the SSH port then MS admin because I want to log in at the rate and at the rate that is my you know IP address and which is 28, 22 and 14. So now we need to type like uh, RSA fingerprint SSG, we need to type yes. And 
yes and then also we know the password also so mom what's the password it's two no uh, it's msf admin okay mom same as the user one uh, okay mom i have okay i have typed the wrong let me log out msf admin will be there msf again uh, i have typed it wrong um, it's admin yeah yeah it's admin my typing error now as you can see i have successfully logged in so like i have requested to the ssh for the shell uh, powershell and then i uh, simply uh, with the username and the domain so like uh, uh, when you brute force the system so in the system hacking phase when you brute force attack it you will have the id and password you can use this format further to take the power uh, shell command okay we generally yeah. use the we uh, in some of the things we use the back doors to like to control the power shell one now okay. uh, for example uh, what i want to see uh, like you know also type ls like this is the F when i said ls so like the file is here okay then i type the cd uh, vulnerable okay so i am currently in vulnerable then ls so like uh, we have the mm, my you know files of the configurations and i can command it from here for the okay like the linux normal linux machine so now i will log out it from here because i just wanted to show you the msf one ssh one so this is our uh, you know metasploit uh, uh, and you can access it from using the N N msf console and now what can i do just so like we have seen in our mnap is that ftp is that and version is this one so now yes, i will copy it and uh, check out the vulnerabilities that what type of vulnerabilities is associated with this one I will simply paste it, and I will go with this one. Rapid seven. Usually, like a lot of uh, sites are there, you can use any one. Okay, ma'am. Because I want to just gain the information about the FSTP, and also want to see the exploit also. Okay, ma'am. So, like uh, as you can see here, uh, we have the so it's a backdoor command execution. Okay. you can uh, install the backdoor also okay and then we have this module exploits a malicious backdoor that was added to the vspd download archive that this backdoor was introduced into this one uh, like in this version of service archive between june 30 2011 to july 1 2011 like for the okay for the one month according to the most recent information available this backdoor was removed on july 3 2011 like it has been patched up currently So, like as you can see here, the exploit is also here. So now, what I will do, I will just simply copy it because it is giving me already the command. And I will go open my MS console. So, like I will copy this now. I will simply paste that module. So, like uh, I can see, it will have the you know information like. Uh, what uh, type of vulnerability i'm going to use okay like you can also search for the other vulnerabilities and so and you can also easily get the these type of commands usually exploits are here then i will type like the show options ha huh. one more thing is that you can type the show option in an msf uh, so that you can have the you know and also you can type the exploits before uh, pasting this one okay i like the configuration normal fs so you will have the list of exploits what uh, it has been already uh, comes with its database like lot of exploits are there currently installed in the database now we have uh, see that uh, show option now on pasting this i have tell the metasploit like i want to use this metasploit the backdoor one okay, okay now after that it has uh, gone to its directory so like if i totally uh, uh, in uh enter the exploit one so it it will show me the exploit list but i have gone to this directory now i will uh 
type the show option. So show option is like our host. So our host basically over the target to uh, IP address, okay? okay. And the our port is 21. So our port is 21. So like uh, in our, uh, you know, Metascore machine, already the FTP port is on the 21. It is using the 21 way. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So it is already using the 21, so it is configured properly. But in any other case, if it's not using the uh, 21 port, you, you can update it. So like okay. uh, currently, I will set the IP address uh, of the R1. Okay, so what I will type just, I will type R, set R host. And then my uh, target IP address that is 172. 172, I will copy it again. 172, 28, 22, 20, 14. 178, 28, 22, and 14. So now my uh, host, uh, sorry, my target has been set, okay? And the port is already been set. In case of the port is different, I can simply again use the same command set our port and the port number, okay? Now I will simply type exploit. So it will use that script to exploit that vulnerability. Okay, now you can see that we have found the shell. We have successfully logged in in the root and we have found the shell and our connection is uh, opened now. Now we have entered into the directory already. So like uh, if I want to uh, suppose simple commands like you name R, so like the server information, if I want to, which version is running, like you can do anything from here. Okay, yeah. if I want to say like, uh, what is the machine name and the server it's running. So like uh, it will, you will get information. And if you type LS, I have the, you know, all the folder of the root, like bin, root, so uh, CD, ROM, Dave, etc. cetera. Okay. So all the directories we have accessed it successfully. Okay. Uh, okay. If you know the file structure of the Linux, you can find like, uh, I think in the etc one, the passwords are being stored or maybe in the day one, you can just simply crawl into any uh, folder. And then you can see like, I have crawled into the day one and you can see the uh, files of from here. So that is how the, we can use the pen testing basically to like uh, inject in any, uh, server or something okay yes ma'am so that is what uh we have covered like web testing or uh, web server injecting using metasploit so metasploit is very good tool and uh, it has been widely used till now and it's a very old tool and uh, it's a good tool <laughs> so that's for it today and uh, have a nice day. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye. Bye.